YouTube, today we have Melodious in ranked PvP going up against a Yu Sakaki. This is uh, one of my favorite decks to play on ranked right now just because it's so explosive and people don't know how to read score the Melodious Diva. Uh, <laughs> I really wish they did, but they don't. And of course we you know first game in we open a not so amazing hand. Yes, we have a lot of removal, but we need to see another Melodious card. But going turn one into nothing really, he's just okay, Yuya. Uh, not really what I was expecting, but we can at least uh we can at least summon. Oh no, we can actually we can actually go really big here. We can just strap OTK. Which is kind of the power of this deck, right? So you can go into a uh, a a, uh, a Shapina, and then you Shapina to actually go into the graveyard and dig for your Sonata. And then we can just summon both our Sonatas out because it's not a uh, once per turn clause on them, which is crazy. So already game, and then we have even more than game, so if there's a Kite Roid, then we, uh, we at least deal some damage. We have the, the ultimate back row set, the triple removal, and that should just be straight up enough for game. Yeah, okay, fair enough. First game on, in Legend, not going too bad, but obviously not the best player in the world to face. Moving into game two versus a Kite Tenjo Galaxy Eyes. They're of course getting a buff in the uh, the brand new uh, Ballast update coming in a week's time, I believe. They're getting access to Malevolent Sin and other number monsters, so they're going to get better. But let's see again, going second, so we have the explosive OTK potential. We have the back row removal. Let's see what Kite can do. Setting one in the back row, we have an option for that with our MST. And what is, what, what is up with Legend players today? We're, we're literally going to OTK them the exact same way we did last time. We're going to blow out the back row, and then we're going to summon into Sonata, and we're going to use our skill, uh, Songstra the Maestra, to once again go and grab out a copy of Shopina. <laughs> like, this is too easy. Where's the wh where's the challenge? Uh, we do have a Necrofusion as well, so you know we can, you know if we really need to, fuse from our graveyard, but opening an OTK is never a bad thing. It just would be nice if the kite would have actually opened something more like, you know, Having a Galaxy Eyes board with the back row mover with the Photon Stream would have been nice to see, but apparently not. And moving into game three, will we find someone that's actually going to be playable? Well, you know, playing the game? Or are we just going to get a dual column that's going to infinitely load? Konami, please, maybe, are we actually going to get something? No, we're not. So, uh, right, right back into Legend we go. Come on, give me... It was a Blue Eyes player as well as a Kaiba. Oh, and of course the error. Thank God, Konami for fixing your game, which you haven't done yet. So now that we've been reset, we've now obviously been queued up into a game with an actual player, and it once again is a Yuya Sakaki. Please, for the love of God, please be playing the game. Play a really cool Pendulum deck, that'd be crazy. That'd be really cool. We're going first, which means we're on a bit of a disadvantage because this deck does like going second more so than going first. What do we even make here, right? I guess we go first with a solo and we just make the, the level four, right? We go into solo and we summon her in defense. Because when she dies by battle, she then can float into another uh, Melodious. So, uh, and we're not going to waste our skill just yet, because we don't want to waste it on something we can't actively make a fusion out of. So let's see what you can do. He doesn't seem to be playing a Pendulum deck. He's playing 25 cards though, so I, I have no hope. Normal summoning into Evertile Najasho. What in the hell is going on? <laughs> Enemy controller as well, gonna be econ taking, right? Oh, that's really cool. That's a really cool interaction. Then the Jash show gonna be activating the special summon now an evil sword from the deck. If he summons another one, we can then pop. That's a very cool interaction there. So I'm 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 mildly interested, right? I'm mildly interested to see how far this goes into Evil Saw Elias, which when special summoned, can special a dino from hand which will be a Evil Sword Elias again. We're going to pop both of them so he can't go into a Bouncer. Uh, just get rid of you and you. He can attack us directly with our uh, with our solo, but that's fine. We're getting it back. He ha he isn't doing anything else. If there's a Kite Rod in hand, which there would have to be only one because of Econ, then we seem to be good. Oh, and of course we draw into the, uh, the one we needed. So now we can actually do a really big brain play. We can go... A solo into uh, into this one, which is uh, Mazata, right? Mazata then activates her effect to special out from hand, the Shapina. Shapina then goes into the graveyard 
to grab us out of the solo once again. And now we have a stacked board full of monsters with our fusion summoning ready to just slap him with an OTK into the face. There we go. Once again, a very, uh, a very easy win. Now, if I didn't have Treacherous, there was a high chance I was losing that game. If he summoned a Bouncer, then I would have died because of the attack point difference, you know, being enough to kill me. So, God bless for Treacherous, the most, uh, the, the most requested banned card in Duel Links. But let's go on and find another duel in Legend Rank. Hopefully we can find someone that's playing Blue Eyes or Harpy or something. Because there's a really cool Harpy interaction with, uh, with, um, what's the one? A uh, Shiberta, right? That you can chain Shiberta to the, uh, the spell card and to just kind of negate the Harpy Banish, the Harpy Pop, sorry, the removal and the bounce. Oh, every option, it was, it's, it's a bounce. Going against Silvio, though, which has me confident we might be seeing a Yasenju player or a Monarch player. Neo New Silvio is the skill to add the, uh, the, the Pendulum Scales into the deck and to, when 2000 or below, grab him out a, uh, a spell card. So, knowing he's going to Pendulum Summon, I'm going to be very cautious this turn. I'm going to set these two, and I'm not going to overextend just yet. He does have um, Dybark and Heatot, which can bounce cards on the field. So I want to stop them from doing that, or you know, when they get there, we can just, you know, hit them with the uh, the good old, oh, okay, he's just not going to... Is this video really going to be me just OTKing? It is just going to be me OTKing. This is literally all the video is going to be. Is me hitting him with the OTK. Like, he might have a Kyroid. Because that deck can run Kyroid. Um, so let's just go and grab a Sonata, I guess, and make Sonata. Because this really isn't all that interesting. I'm sorry this, this video has just been like me OTKing five times. But if this is the experience you're having on rank to this deck, then I don't blame anyone for actually playing it. Because it's uh, clearly doing very well, albeit against not great players. But... It, it did get me like a 12 win streak in, in, uh, in Platinum as well. So uh, there's that. But let's go into here. We're going to go into the... Uh, who do I want? Uh, we could go for the Bloom Diva, right? But if she's bounced, then we're kind of screwed. So I'm going to go into Bloom Prima. Um, because if we can OTK this turn, then we can get four attacks in. And four attacks of over 2,000 is going to be more than a Kite Roid can kind of get through. So, I feel like we're in a very good spot here. Right, so we can go attacking once with our Sonata. See what's in hand. Is there going to be anything in hand? There is something in hand. It's not a veil. It's a Yosenju Oyam. Oh dear. Okay. Um. So, this is going to copy the attack points, right? No. Yeah, it seems to attack. Which is which going to get rid of it? Because it's going to copy the original attack, not the boosted attack. So it's going to be weaker anyway. That's fine. Add your Yosenju card to your hand. Now it means he has three less cards. It can be a Kite Roid. I feel like he would use Kite Roid first, right? So die box to hand. We can then attack in with our, uh, our other Sonata. Anything there? There is another another Oyam. Maybe or a Kite Roid. There's not. There is going to be a Kite Roid of some kind coming down. Go on. Do it. Reveal it. There we go. There's the Kite Roid. I'm glad we have two attacks in. Uh, I kind of wish now that maybe we, maybe we attack with Bloom Prima first, because then we would have actually probably had enough to deal damage. So now we need to be very proactive here. He has three cards. He's going to be activating his skill, which is going to be able to bounce back a Yusenju to add the spell card Yusenju Challenge to hand, which can activate him his skills immediately, which is kind of nuts. So I'm going to... Um, when he does this, I'm going to actually chain here the MST to the one that can modulate levels, which I believe is this one right here. Oh, uh, yeah, that one. So we're going to get rid of that. Because we know he has a Diabok in hand, which can't change level. He does have the Maya Sindri Heatot, though, uh, which is not great. And those don't count as monsters, which is also not great. So Heatot going to come in and use his effect to summon out onto the field. Making itself a scale 11. Which is, is great. Of course he would have that one in hand. Now the big thing is. Does he have access to more than one. Summoning two. So. Summoning a die bark from hand. And summoning one from the extra as well. 
And Diabox is going to be able to bounce back two cards. Bounce the Fusion. Bouncing probably going to be the... Uh, the... One of our Snarters, right? Or would you bounce the back row? You probably bounce the back row as well. No, he doesn't. Okay, we're going to go and treacherous both of these. <laughs> um, I think... Oh, wait. No, it has protection. Damn it. There's protection effects. God damn it. But he does lose the scale. So... There's still hope, right? Because this is going to... Does this bounce back to the hand? It does bounce back to the hand. So there is still hope that if we just find a way to remove the Shinshu R, then we're good. Necro Fusion, though, going to be coming in. Um, not really helpful right now, but it will be. I probably should have set that in defense or something, but I think we're good. Because we can make we can make our Bloom Diva, right? Setting a card, activating Heatot. And we know in hand he has a Diabok as well. So he's going to be activating Diabok as well. Which to me means he's making a rank 4. And he's going to keep bouncing his back into number 39, Utopia. Oh dear. Ah. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, that's not fun. He's going to be able to straight OTK us. I completely forgot the deck even runs. I even have it in my deck in my build. I completely forgot that the Pendulum version runs this strat. Set you in defense. Not really do much and accept our defeat from this Utopia. The first game with a competent player. We almost had it. But unfortunately, we're going to lose by the hand of Utopia Ray. There we go. Our first defeat of the video by a Utopia Ray. We'll do one more duel. Hopefully we can find a match like that that was actually back and forward and there was actually some uh, actually some challenge there. Let's hope we can find one more like that. Moving on to our final duel of the video, Antinomy. Okay, so an another deck that's getting a, a bit of a rework, right? With the brand new balance, the skill change is coming into effect. He's on a three win streak, playing set Delta Excel, obviously. And we're going second, which means that he's going to probably just sit on his big halberd cannon and negate the first thing we summon. Now, we did draw into our Shapina, which means the main way we're going to be summoning out our uh, things we're going to be going for, the uh, the Mazata combo. You summon Mazata, specials from hand, then get back whatever we sent to the graveyard for the skill. We're going to go for that. But it depends on how far he gets, and he doesn't look like he's getting very far. Okay, I will. He's playing Paleos though. So I'm not very, uh, <laughs> not very excited about this one. This could go a lot of ways. So let's see what we hit. Do we hit anything good? We managed to hit a Survival's End, which is not great. So let's go in a first movement solo into a copy of our, uh, our special summon, uh, Melodius. Morella coming down. Okay, so this isn't going to, this is going to get another body on board, which is fine, which means that back row isn't anything too scary, I feel like. I feel like that's what that means. So we're going to summon into our Sonata, and any response, there's something there. There is something there. So let's go and Songe to Maestro this real quick. And summon into our Mazata. Uh, Mazata can then activate her effect. It's probably, it's not Canadia. It can't be Canadia. So it's probably, no, I'm sorry. It can't be uh, Treacherous. So it's either Book of Moon or Floodgate. Or another Canadia, right? So let's go into our Shapina. And then, assuming he lets it live, I can use Shapina's effect, go into the graveyard to, to dig for the... Uh, no, it's a survival's end. Gonna be destroying the Canadia, I assume. Yep, the special level follower Dino from the deck. So Sonata gonna be adding back to hand. He has something he can change. Survival's end. You wait, you can use survival's end in the grave like that? That's mad. 
I mean, I knew... Oh, and there we go. There's the double pop. Thankfully, we haven't normal summoned yet. So, unless there's a third engrave that I don't know about, we should be fine. There is. Is there really, there's really, a, there's really a third engrave, right? There's... Are you kidding me? He opened three in the graveyard. And he can still pop it. Are you fucking for real? And now he chains the third one, and he pops that one. In what? Fucking Christ. Okay. Fair enough. That's, uh... That was, that was certainly a game where I just could not do anything. No matter, no matter what I did there, there was nothing I could, I could not have played that any differently. Synchro Shokan into the one, the only TG Halberd can. 4,000 attack points. Now, if only we had a Kite Roid in our hand because that would, uh, that would be a big BM. Or if we had, if we had just something on board, right, that he could have attacked into, we could have then played our score, but he, he even had the Raiden. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that, um, yeah, that didn't go so well. But I'm going to leave it off there. Here's the deck list. It is very much based off of Luke Tyler's MCS deck that he played in this weekend. So uh, if you want to see his video kind of going over the whole card by card, link down below to that. Would recommend checking him out anyway. Um, this is one of my most favorite Arc 5 decks to, like, have been given more support. And it's really just score and the skill that kind of make the deck function, right? There's things like Ostinato that you're running one copy of and you barely, barely see. And honestly, a lot of times, you don't really want to play it. There's a lot of decks in Duel Links right now that have, you know, ways of removing cards that aren't by destruction. So having a turn one, Bloom Diva, isn't always the best option. So uh, let me down below what you think. Uh, have you been playing Melodious? Have you been enjoying it? There'll be more Arc 5 World content coming soon. Probably going to be doing some Pendulum Sendus right after this one, so uh, stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next Dawnings video. See you then.